All right, well, sorry for that long delay. We were trying to get this up and running for the HHTV people. And, you know, the two things that, that plague us uh, are elevators and technology. Okay, right. And it's not like we're not trying. So, you know, it's tough. Welcome. You know, this is a challenging time, right? We have you know, a lot of stuff related to, you know, work we're doing around here. And some of it is just gut-wrenching stuff. And there's also excitement around it too. I mean, it cuts both ways. There are times when we're having the conversation about, and legitimately about how hard it is to, you know, accept this kind of transition to, to a new building and what it does for people in the West Wing, as well as West Facing Central Tower people. And that's all very real. And there's also a lot of excitement about what is being designed. And today we're gonna to talk about design. And we're having that uh, led by Sean Krein and uh, Ken Boyd from our 2022 Ar AIA Architects of the Year. Okay, you know, we got good designers. I mean, I've said this a bunch of times, every time I come in this space, I just plain feel good. Uh, it's a good place to be and the kind of design work that, uh, that their Mathun is doing, we got an army of people on it. It's just some very impressive stuff. So they're going to walk you through where we are. There are still will be lots of changes, but there are certain things we want to make sure that we get across to folks. Uh, have you kind of digest that? You know, you guys aren't on the design team, so it's not as if, you know, you get to like take your notes and say, hey, move this over by four feet. But we do care about what you're thinking, and we do bring it in uh, and try to incorporate things that maybe we have overlooked or whatever. So I hope you enjoy it, and I hope that you find some fun and good things in this, notwithstanding all the challenges associated with it, and we'll let these guys take it away. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm Ken Boyd with Methune, um, and oh, there we go. Is that better? Okay. I am not used to using a microphone, so I apologize. Oh, is this better? Okay. <laughs> like an ice cream cone, except don't lick it. I might electrocute myself. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, thank you for hosting us um, at your home here. Uh, I'm super excited to share this with you. Um, and. Um, Sean is um, also with Methune. Uh, I'm primarily going to speak. He's going to help me uh, remember some of the facts and figures if you have any questions and help uh, take notes when you have some really good ideas. So, um, um, so I'm going to, oh, it's being, do I have to hit okay? Got it. Okay. Thanks. So uh, since that we've, been um, on delay, you've been able to look at the image on the screen for the past half hour or almost hour probably. So I'm sure you already have a ton of questions, but let me get through the um, short presentation we have first, and then we, we can uh, field questions. So um, this is really, we're gonna share with you our where we are today, our progress. We're not anywhere close to being done designing all of this space. Um, we're you know, almost done with this space. There's, I think, a few chairs or random pieces of furniture that need to be come in, but things like you see here, the ceiling, the floors, the walls, all the finishes, I'm not gonna be showing you those today. We're not that, we're not there yet. That'll be, that'll be coming down the road. Where we're gonna be talking about is some of the, um, um, we're going to share with you some of the massing and what the shape of the building looks like, which is what you've been studying for the past hour. Um, and then I'm going to share with you some of the uh, floor plans and the area plans of where things are located and show you how they're all connected so that you can see how, um, how the, the shape of the building and your spaces are starting to form. And we have some very preliminary sneak peek views of what it may look like. So um, that being said, I'm gonna start off. So um, I'm gonna remind us, um, us meaning um, Sean and I, what our goals were to, to uh, design this space for, for you, this building for you. 
And then I'm going to let I'm going to share with you guys the um, where we are in the schedule. The schedule is um, uh, fairly complicated, but I gave I created a little simple diagram to share with you to show how how we're going to work work both with the city and with Horizon House to get us to the finish line. And then, like I said, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the massing, and then we're going to talk about what we call the amenity podium, which is basically the amenity spaces on levels one, B, B1, and B2. So let's, so um, our program goals, lots of words here on the screen, sorry. Um, number one was maximizing the outdoor space. Number two, and basically, um, sorry. The outdoor space, you already have a wonderful connection with Freeway Park. We want to enhance that. We want to make it better um, and, and have a better connection so that everybody can enjoy that connection with Freeway Park and the outdoor space. Number two, maximize the amenity spaces and meeting rooms like we have here. So we have... Um, I, we have some numbers we'll share with you later about how much amenity space we're actually adding to the whole entire facility, as well as how many, well, we also have numbers on how many meeting rooms or percentage of meeting room spaces um, that we'll show you as well. Um, we're going to be working on, we're not gonna be sharing with you today, but we're gonna be working on uh, secure access to Freeway Park. Um, we actually have a focus group meeting, I think, scheduled for Friday to talk about this, but we're not prepared today to talk about it. Um, uh, a big one is improving the, the in, internal connections for the entire community. Right now, it's a little convoluted how you can connect between West Tower and North Tower. And um, so we're, we have some uh, ideas to show you with what we've done with the B1 B2 and level ones that actually enhance that connect connectivity. So we're, we're super excited to share that with you. Um, we want to enhance the Monday market. I keep looking at you guys because that's where the microphone is. So I'm sorry, I'm not ignoring you over here. But the microphone is pointing me this way. I apologize. You're just as important. <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea. I forgot. Is this better? Now it's really like, right? Can you hear me? Ice cream, ice cream, use cream. Okay, that's better. Oh, this is much better. Now I can face everybody. Thank you. Um, enhance the money market. We, uh, we've met with the money market to talk about early programming. We don't have anything to share today about it, but it, other than we can show you where it is. And um, we, we haven't actually gone into the actual space planning of the Monday market yet. Again, we have time, we'll be coming back. And then um, we've also been meeting and talking about sustainability ideas for both the West Tower as well as the entire campus. So we're exploring all sorts of opportunities and hopefully, um, hopefully we can help you meet your sustainability goals in terms of lowering the carbon footprint I think Bill, the goal was by 2032, right? Okay, we're on it. All right. So that's 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 kind of the, our our metrics of how we're measuring our success of what we're going to hopefully show you. Some of which today is the path that we're taking towards some of these things. So let's talk about schedule. This looks a lot like a a um, a transit map, doesn't it? It's Right, so, um, and we did this on purpose. It's kind of like there's two tracks that we're gonna be doing our during our design per, um, phase phases. And you're probably going to be aware of both of them. The track on the top is the uh, working with the city and getting all the permits and everything. And the first part of it is all public. We're going in front of the design review board for what's called the early design guidance. And then during the master use permitting, we have to go in front of the design review board again. And both of those uh, design review board sessions are actually public. So there'll be public notices that go out that you'll be probably be aware of. 
and as well as packages that will be public knowledge. So a little bit of what I'm going to share with you is actually what we have shared or will be sharing with the city, which will mean it's public knowledge. So that's the um, that's the top one. At the same time, we're going to be designing with Horizon House, going through our design and picking our materials and what the glass is going to look like or what the windows, are, how big the windows are going to be and that kind of stuff. And we're going to go through and do that at the same time. And at the end, the two tracks meet and that's when construction starts. There's no dates on here other than we are here at the very, very beginning. And then right now, what's at the end where it says start construction right now is slated for the towards the end of 2025. So those two tracks, this is a slow train. That's like two years, right? Almost two years, a little less than two years. So some of it has to do with the city takes a very long time to do all these review processes. And some of it is that this is, this is a, a, a pretty big deal and we wanna make sure we're doing it right as we go through. Okay, so this is, when we talk about massing, just want to make sure everybody understands, massing is really just the overall shape of the building, right? The, how, how big it is, how wide it is, where it jogs in and out, things like that. That's when we architects talk about massing, that's what we're talking about. The early design guidance with the city is all about massing. So that's why we're showing you this, because this is what we have to share with the city and the design review board. They want to know where is the building located? Where is it? How, what size is it? How wide is it? Does it meet all the zoning code stuff? So that's the package we have to send in and into the city. And so I'm sharing a little bit of a sneak peek with you so you understand what's going into the city and why they care about those things. So what's... We, we talked about Freeway Park earlier. Freeway Park is is probably for a lot of you is one of the reasons why you came here because of that. It's like this is so cool to live downtown and have a backyard like that. Oh my God, just to be able to look out and see that. That's awesome. We found this photograph, 1976 photograph of one free right after Freeway Park was was built. And you can see the neighborhood around it was was not huge in terms of the number of, of buildings or towers. But you know, since then, Seattle's grown up a lot. Um, me along with it. I remember 1976. Um, that was, yeah, wasn't that the, no, the year after that is when the Sonics won the championship, 77. Um, so anyway, so the picture to the right is the, uh, is a recent photograph of the same neighborhood, almost the same angle. And you can see your, your community is right over here. And the freeway park is nestled here and the convention center is here. And there's quite a few new buildings um, that are pretty tall over in the downtown area. So, um, but, the main thing that we wanted to point out was the relationship between this urban oasis that the freeway park and the fact that it's surrounded by these larger buildings. But because of that, they have this park next to it that has this fantastic relationship. This slide will be, and I'm trying to go forward. There we go. Hopefully I don't go two times. Good. Um, so we use that a little bit as an inspiration for how we how we formed the building. So the idea of the urban forest or that urban oasis, we're taking cues from that. The adjacency to the freeway park is very, very important to us. Because of that, your site and Pigot Corridor is almost like a threshold from meaning a gateway, almost like a gateway between First Hill and the Freeway Park and downtown. It's a very special spot. And this, I love this photograph here, the second photograph here where the, your, the West Wing is actually surrounded completely by trees with 
Pigott corridor to the south, Freeway Park to the west, and then your own terraces to the north. That's so fantastic. We're also taking cues from the, the landscape around us as well in terms of the layering and the terracing. And it's just wonderful how you know the, the freeway park and your, your terraces uh, step up. And so um, we're taking cues from that as well. And then um, the architecture inspiration as well is uh, this building is actually the, um, Oh my God, the uh, Park Place building uh, just west of the park has uh, that connection to the park is through an arcade. The building sort of lifted up and has an arcade. So we took a little cue from that as well. And what were our design inspiration was actually this last image is we were thinking of this building as the urban tree house. So um, I know um, a lot of people who live in the West Wing uh, like the fact that they're nestled right into the trees of, of the park and stuff. And so we took that cue and we're, um, we're building on that, hopefully. Again, this is a slide that is uh, representative of what, uh, what the city wants to see when they ask for the early design guidance packet. So this is the massing that we're proposing from views from around the neighborhood, right? So number one is the view from uh, Ninth Avenue South, you know, at the Ninth Avenue in Seneca. So you're looking north from down or up Ninth Avenue towards, you can see right here is the uh, central tower. And then here's the West Tower. And then as we, and number three here is just coming up Ninth Avenue. Here's the garage entry, the University Street garage entry here, and then the base of the tower. And then here is at University Avenue, uh, number five, looking uh, looking west down University Street. I said University Avenue, sorry, University Street uh, with the uh, central and east tower over to our right. The main entry is right here and then the west tower beyond. And then if we were on the roof of the convention center, we would see a view like this. And you can see here to the left is the North Tower. There's the Central and East Tower and then the West Tower here. And then this view is um, from Freeway Park looking up towards the tower. This is just a um, site map showing where those views are coming from. All right, that was just a sneak peek of the package that goes in. There's a whole other series of other um, images that are the, in the packet that go to the city, but we just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a sneak peek of what's going into them. So we're back to the image you were studying for an hour, and now we get to share with you some of the labels of what you were just looking at. So. This is, again, just to orient you, the North Tower here, the Central and East Tower here, and the West Tower here. And what we're going to focus on mostly is what we're calling the amenity podium, which is the base, which is the piece that's sitting on top of the garage to the west. You can see here is the existing dining facility tucked into the corner of the um, of the central tower here. And then over here is uh, where the Parkview Terrace is and Parkview Lounge and Fireside Lounge above it. It's right in that little spot right there, just to orient you, right? So the, and then below the Parkview Terrace is where the art studios are, and the wood shop and that stuff. And you can see what we're doing is we're actually filling in uh, more of, the park, we're extending the Parkview Terrace and we're actually covering the loading dock and, and garbage area. So the, which is kind of a nice thing. So we're now you're not gonna be looking down into loading dock or maybe it'll even prevent some of the noise from coming up out of that area. And hopefully the smells from the dumpsters too. Um, um, and then we're showing you also um, some of the new um, amenity spaces where we have this volume here, which is actually we're calling the flexible event space right now. 
Um, and then we're, and then there's a internal connector piece here on level B2 that connects with the art studio. Oh, is it not? Oh, it's moving on my screen. Is it working now? Oh, thank you. Am I waving to you? Okay. So follow the hand. Wow, I don't know why I got stuck. That's funny. Right. So here is here's the event space volume that's going to be new. Frozen again. Oops, let's go back. Okay. You want me to start over? Okay, I apologize. Mike was saying something about technology and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, probably use rare, I heard that. Yeah, it probably was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I clicked something wrong. All right, so I orient you again. This is uh, your dining space right here. This is Park View Terrace right here that we're actually showing it extending. Okay. Everybody has to turn their head and look over here. No. Okay. You're going to help me? Okay, so that's the dining. You see it? Yeah, all right. I can see it. Okay, so then Parkview Terrace is here. Yeah. Yeah, weird. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, so yeah, you see the labels with the dots where I was just trying to help help you guys get there. Um, the new, uh, what I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna concentrate on a couple of the new pieces that we're talking about. Um, one is the flexible event space that is tucked in right here. What we're calling the loggia, which is the connector on B2 level. We'll get to that later. We'll show you a diagram that shows you and some plans that shows you. Um, we have added outdoor space out here, in, which includes the extension of the um, uh, Parkview Terrace, as well as some outdoor space up on the top of the tower. There's an amenity space on the top floor of the tower, which includes um, like fine dining type lounge where it's gonna have a future kitchen for a future um, dining and a lounge space and meeting meeting rooms, flexible meeting rooms up on the top floor. I'll show you some of that later as well. And then I'm gonna switch slides, swing, swing us around just a little bit. Now I'm looking more towards from the west. You can see Pickett, Pickett Corridor is here. And we actually have an outdoor space a terrace that's actually just just outside uh, Pigot Corridor that actually um, we're calling the Sunrise Terrace because we think that maybe some morning sun could come in there, be a nice place to have a piece of coffee or coffee and a piece of uh, pastry or something. That'd be nice. And again, the the uh, top floor rooftop lounge and and space there. Oh, look at that. So that's, <laughs> all right, 
I love it. Old school. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going, I'm going to just dive in a little bit more uh, in terms of what these spaces are in plan view. So, and I'm going to start from the lower, we're going to talk about three of the three levels of um, amenity space, level B2, B1, and level one. Oh, and level 33, so that's four, I'm sorry. Um, so B2, the lowest level, is the level where the art studios are currently where you have the art studios and the uh, the, the uh, wood shops over there and uh, your uh, the potting uh, the potting soil space is over there. So that's the level we're on. And what we're adding is everything. There's this dotted line you see here. So what's existing is to the right and what is going to be new is to the left. So we're calling this all new because it actually, we're gonna be adding to it, but this is where the existing studios are located right now. Um, but we'll be doing some new finishes and other stuff in there. So we're calling it new, but everything over here is all brand new. This includes a flexible event space, which is not unlike the space we're in right now, um, but slightly uh, bigger because we're increasing by, by building the tower, increasing the, what will presumably be a population increase of 40%. So we wanna make sure that our flexible event space can take 40% more people. So that's what this is here. We're also moving the Monday market up a level and putting it on this amenity level deck. So it's a little bit more convenient to get to. And, and actually we'll have, um, and we're, you know, like I said, this is where it's located. We actually haven't completely programmed where the space is. The, uh, I mentioned the, the Logium, which is actually the connector. So you can see that we're actually have a interior connection. What's white here is actually all interior space that connects all the way from the elevators that come up here. The, the uh, Northwest elevators are right here. And then we have another set of elevators that are here, there are shuttle elevators that connect all three of those levels. So that connection there. And then this is the elevators that serve the West Tower. And then behind those elevators is what we're calling the Winter Garden and Game Room. And it's a wonderful new space uh, that is actually um, that idea of the tree house that spawned this idea of this space. This is a two-story space just outside of the park, just adjacent to the park, sorry. And it's a, um, and you can see right here, we have a little uh, eye piece that uh, shows a view. We have two views to show you from this level. And you gotta hit the button, there it is. Okay, so this is from the loggia. So just outside that event space, looking out towards the terrace. Yeah, a garden terrace and seeing the park beyond. You're on level B2 or on, which would also be equivalent of C in the West Wing. Um, basically looking at, looking across the event space would be to your right. So this would be an interior um, space as it open, can open up. Again, preliminary view. We haven't actually picked what the flooring is. It's just an idea of what it could look like. We want to just give you a teaser of a, what the space would look like and what those views would be. The other one is the, the uh, winter garden room. This is, a two, like I said, a two-story space um, that is immediately adjacent to the freeway park. It has garden plots. It's hard to see, We um, but we actually have um, what we've planned is this has got the really great um, orientation for sun and um, and we have the uh, private garden plots surrounding this area just outside of this um, is what we're planning. And then we thought on the interior, we could have some interior garden space um, that you could basically you know enjoy all year as well as everybody who would be able to have that view directly adjacent to the park into the trees. 
Um, I think the trees actually might be technically be a little taller than what we're showing in this view. We were putting together photographs and other things. So it's a hint, like I said, it's a hint of what it could look like, not perfect. Now we're gonna move up a level. We're up one level. This is the level of the Parkview Lounge, which would be over here. And it's also the level of the, um, of the um, uh, University Street uh, garage entry and the Parkview Terrace, the existing Parkview Terrace. So B1, exactly. So this is the Parkview Terrace location right here. And what you can see is with that over the top of the loge, that connector, we're, put, we're actually extending the roof terrace. So, the, so we're extending Parkview Terrace and, and making, it, making it bigger. The cool thing about this is that we did a little study for, uh, for Eli. He asked about how we can fit the, your, um, your annual picnic, your barbecue. And uh, he wanted to make sure again, because if we're gonna have 40% more people living here, will we, have a, will we have enough room for all of those people to come to the barbecue? Um, and we actually did a quick little study and showed that we can actually get um, about 300 people sitting on this roof terrace on, at, on, at, uh, at your picnic tables. That'd be quite a party. I hope I'm invited next when this is open. Also on this level, um, what's, what's interesting with this roof terrace, what we did is we've now connected on the outside, we've now connected B1 from the Parkview Lounge you can actually walk outside and actually there's a connection to the West Tower lobby as well to the Parkview Lounge. So now you can get to Parkview Lounge from two different directions or Parkview Terrace, sorry, from two different directions. And this is also the level where that terrace, the, what we call the Sunrise Terrace, which is the terrace to the south of the West Tower overlooking Pigott Corridor, which part of that safety thing we were talking about with the safe is actually eyes on the street it gives you that safety. We're hoping that this will actually help enliven that space and, and put more eyes on the Pigot corridor and make it safer. And then there's um, the orange represents amenity type space. These are some meeting rooms that we've snuck in that are basically reservable meeting rooms that you can that you can get on uh, reserve and get to from this uh, the public space. All right, now, this is, this is a view from the Parkview Terrace looking towards, we're almost to the Parkview Lounge. We're showing, almost showing you the entire terrace, that length of terrace. You can see to the left, this is where your existing dining is here. And the existing um, wall that's next to Parkview Terrace of the garage that's right there. This little piece right here, is that extension of that wall is the that event space that we've added. So it um, and then I can't um, I we wanted to do a view of what it would look like getting closer when you get out to the to see the thing, but that will that'll come later. We'll surprise you with that view. But this was um, again because we were um, playing with existing uh, uh, photographs that we had. We had to pick this view. So we're excited about that one. All right, now we've gone up one more level. Now we're at level one. This is where the dining is right here. At level one, your main entry and lobby into the central tower is over here. And of course your fireside lounge and Anderson Hall where we're sitting, I'm standing like right there. Okay, on level one, in the new construction, we have a new roof terrace. That's the roof of that new event space. Is now a terrace that's just off of the dining and has access from the West Tower here. And then there's uh, 
a small another potential meeting room or meeting space there and actually the tower and the residential units actually start at level one for the tower and start going up from there so a little bit of amenity here and and connectivity that's going to help a lot oh i should mention up on the top you can might be reading that with the um with what we're doing with the uh, new bistro and the new dining uh, expansion, again, going back to the, uh, the numbers, we're basically increasing the, um, was it 56% 50, the number of seats. So if our population is going up by 40%, we're actually increasing our, our, our seat count. And in, in when you combine the new bistro and the dining expansion to, um, by 56%. And now, um, top level of the tower. Um, it's planned so that it actually could be another dining space or another restaurant. It's planned for that. We're going to have a future kitchen, future commercial kitchen. But um, right now, we're, we're calling it most of its flexible amenity space. There could be a fine dining and or lounge, a small space, potentially a lounge space where you might be able to get a cocktail, maybe, hopefully. With a view like that, I'd love to get one. Um, and then some lounge space and actually another uh, other flexible uh, spaces for meetings and or events are up there now, but um, that we're planning. And we also have a potential view. This is the one that knocks your socks off. So um, I know some of you, when you get to the um, your, your 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 lounge that you have now on top of the um, the west or central tower, sorry, um, you can see Mount Rainier up there. Still, sometimes you get like little block views. Some of the buildings or hillsides are you're just poking above those. Here you're way up higher, so you're you're getting a great view of Mount Rainier, and uh, you'll be able to see the Olympics in the other direction around some of the downtown towers. And you know, we know that the downtown towers actually block some of those views, but around those, you can see the Elliott Bay and the Sound and the Olympic Mountains. Spectacular spot. Again, the um, finishes, what you're seeing in the interiors, the tables and chairs were just stuff. We're just trying to give you a sneak peek of what, this, what the views look like. We're gonna come back and design uh, what this actual space is going to look like and what the seating is going to look like. But just wanted to give you a sneak peek. So all in all, with all of the new construction, we're, we're doing some math here. So bear with me. I know it's, um, but anyway, the um, for our exterior common space, the exterior amenity space, the gardens, terraces, and that's uh, that kind of stuff, Existing, you have 17,000 square feet right now, today. When, when the West Tower project is done, you'll have 27, over just a little over 27,000 square feet of outdoor space, which is an increase of 58% of outdoor space. Same equation for interior amenity space. We're doubling it with the new construction. So we have, uh, right now you have 28,000 square feet and we'll end up with 56,000 at the end of the project. Right, now I'm gonna try to train you all to be architects with this very complicated diagram. This is, we've taken the three floors that we just talked about and we're turned them and we've stacked them and spread them out a little bit to show you all three stacked over the top of each other. And what was we're trying to demonstrate is how this connectivity works and how we're knitting together the entire community with this new work, right? And the most important thing is the, the connectivity is the yellow that you see. So on level one at the very top, just to orient you, you can see we've pointed out where the fireside lounge is. And we've pointed out where Anderson Hall is, where we're sitting right now. And then also the dining hall in pink over there. And you can see how the yellow 
the existing yellow that you have that connects the lobby and the fireside lounge and goes into the dining, we're extending into the west, west tower, right? And then that gives you connections there. So that doesn't change that much. But what's new here is the new shuttle elevators that you see in the sort of aqua green, which is pointer right there. That's, that's new. That'll be part of the project. And those shuttle elevators start at level one and go down. They don't actually connect to any of the residences. They are there just to connect the, um, the, the amenities. It goes to the parking garage, you're right, and the parking garage. So you can come up from the parking garage. Thank you very much. Somebody reads drawings really well. So um, going down a level, you can see where the park view lounge is and then the extended park view uh, terrace. And then over at the west tower, you see where we have the lobby and that's at, and where the garage entry is. And that's also because of University Street and the slope, that's also where the secondary, we call, we're calling it a secondary entry, but also we need an exit, is where you can exit out of the building at that level. So that de facto becomes like, you know, like the entry here that you have for North Tower, the sec, you know, which is the exit, so it also acts as a secondary entry. We have one of those off of University Street at, the, at this level. The, Cool thing about the shuttle elevators, they also will help connect the valet parking. So what we're doing, we're improving the valet parking so that when you come out of valet, you don't have to go through under the central tower. You can now can pop over into, into the building, the west wing portion and get to the shuttle elevators and pop up to level one. Or if you happen to live in west tower, you can keep going over to the west tower things, west tower elevators. We go one more level down, the B2 level, which is where the flexible, new event, flexible event space is, also where the existing art studios are, and the winter garden that we showed you, and the Monday market, all on this level, all connected with that loge, which is the yellow that you see there, and that connects, and essentially connects the shuttle, the new shuttle elevators that we're describing, as well as the Northwest elevators, which are the ones over off of the Fireside Lounge. So now you have these two elevators connecting to all three levels and can get you to all these spaces. I think this connectivity actually helps you, you get, you know, have more access or more easier access to all of these added amenities that we've added over in the West Tower project. This one clear? Everybody get this one? This one's pretty, pretty complicated. Good. Now we're gonna have a quiz. No, just kidding. <laughs> now you get to quiz me. So Warren's gonna have, so we can hear the questions. So Beth and I are gonna go around with microphones for questions and answers. We over here for. Hi, I'm Bill Anderson. I, when you talk about amenity spaces is going to be greater, you said by 58% than the current amenity spaces. Uh, and we're having, as you said, a 40% increase in population. So I think that's important. But one of the things that I'm curious about is how you define amenity spaces because there's a category, a class of amenity spaces that are not assigned. They're not rooms for this or rooms for that or facilities for something else. They're just spaces. And you should know an organization like this, a place like this, those are very important spaces for the social welfare of this community. And it's the casual conversation, the, the ad hoc meetings, the, that sort of stuff that goes on. It's been restricted somewhat during COVID because we're all sort of tied down a little bit. But when we get, I, rid of COVID, which I hope we do someday soon, that'll be a very important space. So when the finance people say, we can't build that beautiful design you've got, and you say to them, well, then we'll cut out a couple of apartments 
and the finance people say you can't do that because that's where our income comes from. What happens is that this unassigned amenity space tends to get smaller and smaller. And I just want you to know that that's terribly important space for a group like this to function in a socially enriching way. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. That message has been heard loud and clear. So there are not enough elevators in your plan. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, no young people are interested in maintaining and repairing elevators. And so I don't know how you actually plan for anybody to get up to that beautiful dining area at the top there. And the other thing I have to say is that I asked for a rooftop deck and I'm not getting it. So what I want is to be able to see the stars, not the buildings, thank you. I have a question here about your gardens. We have at Horizon House something about 40 individual gardens that are tended by something like 60 very enthusiastic gardeners. And we're all very concerned that we don't see those anywhere. There's lots of green around, mm -hmm. but they tend to be things that will be uh, that Horizon House is going to have to pay for somebody else to garden. And what we need is um, individual uh, gardening places and hope that they can be accommodated. Absolutely. We, in fact, we've met with some of you about this very thing a little while ago. Um, and I apologize, our diagrams are very diagrammatic. Like on this plan right now, it's all it's just shows all the terraces all green. Um, we we are planning for the individual plots. Um, we just weren't showing them today. Um, and when we met earlier, um, and we started looking at solar orientation, uh, you know where where would the ideal space be for for those garden plots? And we identified that area being around where we're calling the winter garden here. I don't know if you can see is my Guy moving and it just stopped again. But um, but that's um, that's where we were talking about putting them. They're just not shown in this drawing. So we're going to continue to work on that um, and and develop and bring it back to the to the group to um, to make sure we're doing it right. They're going to take questions from people in the overflow area, and then we're going to kind of go in a circle to make sure we capture everybody moving forward. All right, Beth, I have one question from the overflow. Sorry, Beth, no questions from overflow. Hello, testing. All right. Okay. So to clarify what we're doing, I'm Beth over here by the windows. We're going to do a question from this section and then we'll go out into the lobby or the fireside lounge if there's questions there. And then we'll go down to Lauren and then we'll do the middle section. And so we're doing a circle so everyone gets a chance. So just so you know when it's your turn to talk. So I have a question over here. You showed a 58% increase in the size of the dining area that exists now, but you didn't mention the kitchen. Is that going to be increased in size? It should most likely. Um, yeah, part of the part of the, the designs that we're working for. So I'm actually the Ken is the project manager for the West Tower. I've been the project manager for the master plan renovations work. And those projects are part of the master plan renovations. Um, there are two things that are happening there. Um, in what you currently have as the bistro, that entire block of, um, of the, the base of the central tower, currently the bistro is just a little sliver of it and Mike's offices and 
Beth and every, a lot of the people I see standing around in the back are, are in that section. Um, they will be moving to the second floor. There's some other renovations that are going on to enable them to be able to move upstairs. Um, and when that happens, we'll add additional kitchen space for the bistro. Um, I, I think you, the, on the numbers, the, the bistro seating increases a, a huge amount. There's also renovation work that's being planned for the existing kitchen. The existing kitchen's been you know, built and changed over time, but we're looking at making that a little bit more efficient and adding some additional kitchen space that will not be as separated. You know, Currently, you can't really see the kitchen from dining, there will be areas where you'll be able to, you know, see active um, experiential cooking. Uh, some things where you know you you can engage a little bit more. The people who are actually preparing the meals. So it, there there are two areas then where that expansion will take place to enable the extra seating to be served. Risa, is there any questions from the uh, lobby fireside lounge? Okay, it looks like no questions. So Lauren's section is next. Is the, um, when you talk about the, the location of the shop, the wood shop and the um, art studios, will those places have to be emptied for you to do the, the uh, work? Will, will, the, uh, will you need to have all the wood shop tools taken out? to do the work down there or will that area be worked around? That's a very good question because I'm not sure whether the wood shop itself, whether we're doing any renovation of the wood shop itself, but we're not doing anything in that space. We don't necessarily have to move that equipment, but if we're doing work over that space or, or outside of that space, we may have to temporarily you know, uh, take it out of service just for the guys to do that work. Um, but I don't know if we have to relocate it. I can answer that. Um, so we're planning on re relocating it temporarily. Uh, we have been talking uh, to the wood shop committee and um, people that work in the wood shop. Um, if we do need to relocate it, we will, but we are planning on redoing the wood shop. And we will be. Um, switching around locations of the studios and making some of them larger. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, we have lots of middle middle section here. Right. I have a question. In all the talk of the West Wing Tower, I heard nothing about storage. Like we have tremendous art need for storage and, and the money market has storage and the residents will have storage. There's, um, again, we, we showed you B1, B2 and, um, and level one. There's also um, the levels in the garage. We're redoing the garage below as well. There's, uh, there's a lot more storage that is going to be available um, lower. There's some storage associated with Monday Market that'll be um, adjacent to Monday Market, but for tenant storage and general building storage, there would be other opportunities. Um, also, like the uh, renovations office, which is currently under the central tower, actually will be moving to under the west tower, closer to where the contractors will be coming in. That space itself also can be reallocated to storage. Okay, I'm mostly interested in the art storage where we have a need for large art storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely will work with, with the team on that one. So 20, 30, 32 stories is very tall. Uh, how will that impact the light on the overall area, which is now so very, very precious? Um, we've, we've done some, uh, in fact, in the in the package that we were, were preparing for the city, we also have to do a, a shade shade study. So what's in, what's interesting in the shade study was that um, a lot of the other buildings that already exist create about the same amount of shade. And the fact that, I mean, the West Tower is definitely taller than the West Wing, 
but going the west tower that we originally had planned on was going to be 20 some stories and now we're at 30 some stories the difference there actually the shading affects the neighbors more than us so um <sighs> so doesn't help i know but um but so so the but also the um the other thing i wanted to say was that the uh the the evening sun comes around and and the afternoon and evening sun comes around and gets into the uh, open space um regardless of what how tall the tower is I have two questions. As a part of your program goals, you did not have the impact on the current residents. Everything you've described will have impact on us. And the second question is, how are you gonna get supplies for this construction? Ninth Avenue will be closed every day because that's the only way you can get materials there. So let me just answer the one about the blocking of the view of the west facing central tower residence. That happens. And it can't be accommodated in the design of the new building. Uh, it's just the way it is. And it is unfortunate. And it is necessary if that building is going to go up. We will spend time with west facing central residents to see what alternatives, whether it's a different living environment, whether it is economic remuneration, or something that will allow some mitigation of what's going to happen. But we can't say that we can make a see through building. You know, it's not going to happen. The people in the West Tower don't want to have windows that go all the way through their, their building. And it's just one of the challenges, and it's not comfortable. And we know it, we, we know that it impacts a lot of West Wing residents or a West uh, facing Central Tower residents, and we'll try to do our best. This is a trade off, and we can't overly apologize for it because it is what it is. But we'll do our best to make it so that folks who are facing that direction have a livable environment that they feel good about or they're able to move to one where they can. And then the other question was on how do we get the supplies to. Uh, that will be probably more of a construction question. You're welcome to answer it, Ken. But yes, it's going to be incredibly disruptive. There will be trucks, there will be lifts, there will be all sorts of things required to get materials to be able to put this building up. It's something else you can't really say, well, let's not do that. It, it is a part of an overall disruption to get to this place. And it is unfortunate and it's necessary. I'll just add that we have had one-to-one -one meetings with all the Central Tower West facing residents, and we'll circle back to those residents again to do some more follow-up one-on-one conversations. Okay, and just again, to clarify how we're doing questions, I'm Beth over by the window. We're doing one question per section and we're going in a circle. So now we're at the window section. After this, we'll go out to the fireside lounge for one question, over to Lauren by the wall for one question, middle section for one question, just to keep it moving and fair for everyone. Thank you. First, first of all, I think we've all been uh, uh, not, not adequately expressing, at least I'll talk for myself, the admiration of the aesthetics of what you are doing and the sensitivity to needs that you have addressed. Okay, there's one area which it seems to me is outstandingly missing. When this um, renovation process was first conceived before COVID, the last meeting before COVID led by the CEO had at the first priority for the new approach to changing uh, and expanding Horizon House was assisted living. And it's striking that the words have not appeared in anything you have said. You're going to move the administration to the second floor, which is where assisted living is. 
You're going to increase the um, uh, the available space in one arena by 20 to 27,000 square feet from 17 from the other from another area doubling it from 28 to 56,000 square feet um, the largest growing segment of the American population is the over 85s and so there's going to be increased numbers of those people all these things are well known the, the guy who's looking at me <laughs> well as you. Uh, and I was wondering, so that we went from the first priority to off the, um, I don't know, off, off, the, off the tracks or something. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, I'm anxious to hear uh, the response. There are many changes in how assisted living is do, being done these days. And well, our hope is that we would come out being a state of the art place for showing how assisted living should be done. And I hope that that's gonna happen. Thank you. So uh, Sam, I think that those are good points. The number one priority was not assisted living when we started with this project. Assisted living needs to be taken into consideration. Right now we have a significant overcapacity of assisted living relative to those who wanna go there. And we've been dealing with that overcapacity for the better part of seven years. So we, when we go through the arithmetic, which is actuarial study, it had projected that we were going to be consuming our assisted living like nobody's business, and we should just be really heavily assisted living. That's not our reality. And part of the reason for that reality is that we, uh, we have a model here where we want people to live independently as long as possible. And guess what? That's exactly what people are doing. That we, compared to other communities around the country, are about 30% less movement from independent to assisted because of our model. And we see that because of the entrance fee turnover is about 30% less than it is for our competitors. Why? People are staying and living in independent living longer. Now, where Sam really makes a good point is, how do we make what we have in assisted living that state of the art? It doesn't necessarily mean changing the capacity, although that could happen at some way distant future time if, if uh, how people live changes. But we do want to review and evaluate how to make it better. And that's a part of what some of our design work is, but it's not West Tower design work. It is independent of West Tower. So yes, we're taking it into consideration. Yes, we believe we have the current capacity and we do wanna have a rock solid assisted living and we wanna encourage independent living as long as possible. Risa, are there any questions in the Fireside Lounge? In, in my opinion, can you hear me? Yes. In my opinion, as an architect, is that the out, outdoor spaces that you're creating are going to be an enormous enhancement because there's more continuity in them. Is there any possibility that the outdoor spaces could be in use before the entire project is finished? Is it possible to phase the work so that some of these wonderful outdoor spaces are available sooner? I don't know if I want to answer that question. <laughs> um, uh, we'll see. Uh, I, yeah, that's actually a sequencing and uh, logistics question that would be really hard uh, because the even from the city's perspective, they you know the occupancy of a space that you permit, generally you have to have the occupancy for the higher, whole entire project that you permit. You, we can look into partial occupancies, but also becomes a safety issue if you have people out on the out on the terrace below uh, the crane that's swinging over your head with <laughs> with concrete and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's a little tricky. As to the uh, individual garden plots, if you are increasing the population of Horizon House by this much, we need to also increase the availability in the number of good garden plots for individual gardeners. We're already up against 
a shortage of garden plots from time to time, and particularly garden plots with sunshine and good soil. And the garden committee and we individual gardeners feel very strongly that that is an important part of Horizon House. Duly noted, yes. Is there a penalty on the middle section for taking too many? No, just kidding. Um, I have a question from way back at the uh, approval level. We mentioned public hearings on the design. Uh, that's an opportunity for all the neighbors to get together and say, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, is there a PR work being done with the surrounding, with uh, uh, Virginia Mason and all the buildings surrounding us? Happen. Yes, there there is. There actually will be. Uh, we work. We've already met with like the uh, First Hill Association once already, a, a little while ago. Um, but also, um, Natalie Quick, who is our uh, PR person, will be working. She'll be starting almost immediately after this. Be starting a um, community outreach program that uh, will be basically talking to all of your neighbors, including. Um, you know, individuals in, 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 you know, residences, as well as the commercial uh, neighbors. Yes. Correct. Uh, one more little question. Uh, everybody in the, in, in the current Horizon House complex knows about elevators going out of service. Now, if you have a 33 story tower, you wanna be pretty sure that that doesn't happen regularly. I wonder what's been thought about there. Uh, elevator capacity. In other words, do you have enough elevators to literally move people? And the second, of course, is, you know, will they work? Uh, we've committed to getting working elevators. I don't know why we didn't commit to that before, but we, we definitely are going to be, you know, getting the Best elevators, believe me, I have had this conversation over and over again. This is outrageous. You know, I'm, I'm not really trying to be light about it because I understand how it really is a disaster not to have elevators working. We cannot not build the building because the elevator, you know, we're not sure if they're making good elevators. They're making good elevators. We just need to make sure we're getting the good elevators. And if we got to pay up for the elevators, we're paying up for the elevators. Mike, how old are your elevators? No, North Tower, not very old. And those guys are breaking down, but the guys here are pretty old, the ones in the Central Tower. The North Tower, obviously newer, but the problem was there were some design shortcuts. Something didn't get done right in the original design that has made it somewhat problematic. And it is, you know, we are trying to upgrade the technology of those elevators, which is a lot of the issue now that they're, they're more dependent on software programming than anything else. So, yeah, I'm, I'm this, you know, we should have a separate meeting, but it would be a week long to talk about elevators. We'll do that at another time. Now we want to talk about design. <laughs> Could you tell me uh, how many feet there will be between the west wall of the central tower and the east wall of the west tower? That's a really good question. Um, it's no, 40 feet is the minimum requirement. I believe we have in excess of that. I don't remember, Sean, if the exact number, but well, 40 feet is the re minimum required by the city. Um, we were trying to keep it to 60 feet. I below, I believe we're below 60 feet, but um, we're definitely over 40. We might be closer to 50. And 60 feet, just for you, just so you know, 60 feet is the width of a street. So you, in your typical urban corridor from building face to building face, typically on a street is 60 feet, right? So we're, that's what we were trying to preserve that, but I think we may have encroached slightly. Lauren, it's you. Thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering about the construction impact on the university garage. Uh, 
Is that going to be redesigned? Will it be open during construction? I, it's hard for me to visualize where it is, you know, relative to the West Wing. Right. So the um, actually the diagram I have up now shows you where the um, university garage entry is, and um, we're doing everything left. Everything new is to the left of this dotted line. So presumably the University Street entry will be available. Um, maybe when the truck is backing up into uh, to be loaded or something, it might block it temporarily. Um, but um, the idea is that, um, that that will be available. However, the, the part of the garage that is under the, currently under the West Wing will be completely demolished. We have to go all the way down to grade to put the footing in for the tower. So we have to take all of that away. When we rebuild that garage, we're actually gonna, we're gonna improve the connectivity with the rest of the garage. So it's gonna be a lot easier to get to. Right now, your garage has an entry off of, off of 9th Avenue to get to the level G only. This is the only way you can get to level G. Uh, H can only be uh, um, accessed from the alley below. Um, we're actually gonna help connect all of those levels from the interior. So if you enter at University Street, you can actually get to all of those levels. That's that's the uh, the same Tetris uh, puzzle move that we have to do with everything else, right? Yeah. To have uh, off street parking, you know, whether it's a lot over there or somewhere else, we will have some kind of valet, valet service to be able to pick up cars and bring them back. Because as, as uh, Ken is saying, that those garages go away, but obviously we're going to get the cars out first. And then we're going to make sure that you have a place to park them. Note to self, get the cars out of the garage before the wrecking ball shows. Okay, so that's, that's my contribution to this project. But we will have parking available and we will make it as easy as possible. Again, you're seeing, you're experiencing the beginning of the inconveniences. We're not going to hide away from them, but we want to expose them. So we come up with alternative solutions to get us by. I'm, I'm imagining all of a sudden a bunch of cars showing up at Monday market. <sighs> I promised to ask this question for a neighbor who's traveling. Uh, she, her question is, and this is a, does apartment design, and I know there's not a lot of detail available, but she was wondering uh, if there would be special design consideration about the east facing West Tower apartments to minimize that 40 to 60 foot gap between the two buildings so that we're not replicating the problem that the west facing central tower is facing right now. Um, so I, I'm assuming that architects know how to do that when it is known in advance that there's going to be another building. But I, I, I would like to reassure my, my neighbor when she returns that uh, that's being taken into consideration. Yeah, I think what we're, what we're trying to do with our planning, the unit planning is to make sure that the, the units are oriented in a way that they're either facing directly north or south as opposed to east on the when we're planning the West Tower, um, with the emphasis being on the corners. So maybe the main living areas would be on the corners where you would have the views, the diagonal views past the tower. So you'd be able to see, potentially see the Cascades and Mount Rainier if you're on the south side and the Cascades and hopefully Mount Baker on a very clear day on the, um, on the other side. Hopefully that helps. Most of the west facing central tower people are concerned about the loss of light. So I have three quick questions about that. Are you going to do a shade study in the winter? Okay. Yeah, the shade study is required to be done in the winter and the summer that, okay. we, have, that we already completed. And how many stories above the sky lounge will the new tower be? I know it's 30 some stories. 33 but... minus 19 is. Well, oh, okay. 
That's the way to figure it then. 14 stories. Yeah. How many? 14? 14. And are you going to make a model of the current plan like you have out in the uh, yeah, that hallway? Is, that is the plan. We were planning on redoing the model that we have here. Um, we um, don't know what we were waiting for, but we were, um, we, we've done, but we've been doing a little um, of our own internal modeling uh, that would not be, uh, I say it internal because we're doing it with cardboard and tape and, and all that kind of stuff. It's not something you would put under glass and put on a lobby somewhere, but it helps us figure out what the thing looks like. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, almost a penalty there. Almost a penalty on the on the right group. It occurs to me that at some point in time, almost the entire from the first level down in is going to be under construction. How are we going to survive during that time? How are you going to stage it if you're doing the kitchen, the bistro, the everything? Oh, the 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 kitchen and bistro will actually be completed prior to the West Tower starting. Good. Woo. Good thing I was right. So I would like to shift the conversation a little bit. I'm hearing some things that make me really nervous. I came, we came to Horizon House primarily because it seemed to serve a variety, a very diverse um, population. And now I'm hearing things about <laughs> secure way to the park. Is it just Horizon House folks that are going to get escorted through the park? I mean, I don't know, that sounds like a gated community to me. And I know Mike, you would be happy with that, but I wouldn't be happy with that. Well, I take and then I that, hear Barbara. Okay. And then I hear about fine dining. These are general ideas, But I don't ideas, know what Barbara. the rest of us are gonna eat. <laughs> you know what, this is not, we are not trying to create a community of elitism, okay? That is not our goal. There's not our goal. And we want to be able to manage our, our costs for everybody. One of the reasons why we do this is so that we are able to invite other people into the community that are of different means. It is a number one goal of the organization to have a diverse community economically, socially, and uh, yes. other diversities, OK? Yes. That is always the commitment. We're I not don't gonna see have it, this debate. Mike. I'm well, sorry. I'm I sorry. Absolutely that's not what this not meeting is, Barbara. We're more than happy to have other conversations about concerns. This one's a design meeting. And so we want to kind of keep it to design. And then we will take up the other issues of concern in a different way. Yes. When would we do that? Yes. Since you are the only one that seems to get to vote, Mike. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, as one of the people who I don't know if I'll make 33 flights, but I do walk the stairs. <laughs> and um, first of all, I want to say I, I am so excited of the possibility of, of that one little internal circulator to, to connect all those sort of main activity levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, one of the things I've been hoping for was some way that if I had a visitor come in a wheelchair or something, that we could just go directly to some kind of a way to get to the first floor. And I think that's what I see in that design on it, that mm -hmm. we'll be able to, to do that Absolutely. right to the valet parking area. We'll, we'll, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's fabulous. So the other question is about the elevators, aside from... <laughs> The seminar that Mike is going to give in a couple of months um, is um, are, I, it doesn't really show where stairs are, but are there sort of stairs? I mean, you've got to do it code-wise, I know. Yes. So are they conveniently located for those of us who want to be able to use the stairs? I, I, 
purposely did not point out the stairs because uh, I knew we'd be focusing on elevators today so much. <laughs> um, but each uh, the tower itself has to have stairs by code, like you mentioned. Um, so in the blue core where we have elevators, there are also two stairs that are in there that, um, that are there. But we also, uh, what we didn't point out was adjacent to those shuttle elevators connecting those three levels, we actually have uh, communicating stairs that are there for those, three for those three levels that are open stairs, very convenient. Yeah, the idea is that they're open and, and sort of monumental. Very inviting, right. You guys don't get any more questions. You're done. I think we're going either outside or to Lauren. Outside's done. Lauren, any questions on this side? And this is a question, not a comment. Um, I walk many days on the um, on the B1 terrace. I can't tell if it's bigger or not in your design. It looks bigger. It looked like it was really long because it covers up so, the connector between the West Tower and the and and the North Tower. But I I, I would just like you to tell me if if it if it's bigger or not. So the when you're saying the B1 terrace, you're talking about the Parkview the Parkview terrace, right? The current Parkview terrace ends on the diagram that's on the screen right now, about where the word roof and terrace start. That's about where the current Parkview Terrace ends. So we're, we're, we're adding a lot more. Yeah. My question was about the parking um, in the garage. The buildings are going to accommodate a whole lot more people. How about the garage? How large, much larger is that going to be? We've increased the capacity I actually don't have the numbers in my head right now, but we have increased the capacity. I'm not sure um, by what percentage we've increased the capacity. Um, I don't believe because of the limited footprint and um, I know nobody here is a parking engineer, but the shape of this garage is actually very problematic in terms of parking layout, not very efficient. So um, we've tried to make it more efficient um, so we're, we're, but we have a limited real estate we're working in. So we've increased the capacity. I don't know if we've increased it the same 40%. I don't think we've increased it by that 40% though. Um, I have a simple question, which people said has not yet been asked. Why do you have to make it so tall and add so many people? You're doubling the size. I'm just you're going to say cost benefit analysis, but there's also a human component. We wrestled with different size buildings. We started with 26, we dropped it to 20, we've now since moved up to, to 33. And um, you're right, it does impact the, you know, both physically as well as the number of people. And quite honestly, it is what it takes to do it economically. It is extremely expensive to build in downtown Seattle, among the most expensive cities in the country to build in. And you have to have so many units in order to make it pencil. And what we know is that the longer we wait, it will be, we will outstrip our ability to ever build anything here again. So we have to make sure that what we do now is something that's gonna last into the future and have the capacity into the future. And it's like everything we've been talking about, we can feel good about something over here, or at least some of us can. And then on the other side over here, there is a trade-off. And we're trying to balance that trade-off and we may or may not succeed, we'll find out. But we believe that, that the 33 stories is what makes it pencil economically without taking unreasonable risk. Have you taken into consideration the, the main lobby desk and also the mail room? What you're gonna do to increase that? Yes, Sean, Sean is actually working on that, but we are, we are planning improvements that again, will that be done prior? Uh, 
Yes, so that'll actually even be done prior to the West Tower project even starting. The, the improvement, the yeah. improvement. We're It'll redoing, the we're existing. remodeling our current lobby and yes. mill room. At the same time, we have master planning projects and we have a West Tower project. And while they connect and they relate, they're being done at separate times. So we got this space done. Then the movement is to take care of the executive offices and begin to expand the dining so that we have capacity well in advance of building a West Tower. And then the, the idea is to to continue to do the other master planning, whether it's parts of assisted living or wherever, in order to make sure that those things get done, like the lobby area, the marketing area, and so on, are done in advance of the West Tower so that it all fits together and that we don't have it all jumbling up at one time. Now, ideally, we should have done these years ago, uh, but we are where we are. So is the answer you're going to expand the, the communication room? Expansion, expansion is a tough one because we only have so much in our footprint of the space that we're remodeling, right? You can reorganize it to get greater efficiency. And we've gone through studies with all of our exec team to say, all right, how many people do you need? How will you use space? What's in a conference room versus what's in an individual office? But we can't make more space in that area. We can only <laughs> organize it better. Well, you're talking 40 more per percent of the of the population here. So, you know, you've got to have a bigger sure. room. Uh, that room's not going to accommodate. Which room are you talking about? The mail, the mail room. room. Right. So, right. That's true. Yeah, definitely. We don't have enough boxes in there. So that will be a part of, of a combination of master planning and a part of the West Tower. How many elevators are going to be included in the new plan? Right now, um, the tower itself has three elevators. One's a freight and or we're studying it, whether it's a pure freight elevator or a hybrid freight passenger. The other two are passenger elevators. And then we have the two shuttle elevators that we're actually also adding. So there's five new elevators in the new project. Uh, my wife is it, my my wife and I are in the west, are in the uh, west facing part of the west tower or east tower okay uh, the west facing part of it and we we appreciated the fact that we're in the northeast part of the west facing tower. In the diagram that you showed here, it looked like a, 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 a change of plan on your part that you're going to expand the width of the West Tower to block out some of the north uh, view that we used to have, the northeast view, northwest view. I, I was following you. I, I got you. Yeah. Um, the if you're talking about wider than the west wing, that is uh, that is true. Yes, the tower is wider than the west wing. Um, I actually I I don't know. I'd be guessing because I don't know exactly how wide the west wing is off the top of my head. So I'd be guessing, but I can get back to you on that one. Yeah, that that's a. Are you finished? Was that your last question? Did I did I answer your question? No. 
You I don't, don't know, know the, the I don't know the dimension. I'm you sorry. don't know the dimension. I, I don't know the dimension. Yes, the but this is the diagram. You you live here, right? What? But I'm facing north also, north west. Yeah. Your north view, your north view will not be blocked at all. So north. Is there corner windows? Aren't there corner windows on the north? Yeah, there are corner windows on the north. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see. Yeah. Uh, this is existing uh, dining, right? And then there's that connection between um, the Orchid Lounge is right about here. Um, there's the other corridor that comes through past the um, executive wing and offices, comes around this area. So. The, the existing West Tower is about in this space. I'm not sure exactly where that line occurs either, but no, that, that it, the existing West Tower is wider than that because this is also moved south, right, Ken? And the, we have, the West Tower has also pushed to the south, closer to Pigott Corridor than the existing West Wing. Yes. Note to note to ourselves, bring in the existing conditions drawing for the next time for reference as well. Yeah, sorry we didn't do that. Um, yeah, I, we're at that end. There we go. Thank you, Lauren. I just wanted to say thank you for all the careful consideration that you're giving to this overwhelming and exciting project. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I have one last question, perhaps. Right here. Okay. Um, I'm also very interested in light and preserving as much of the sunlight as we can. Um, how do you go about failing a shade study? And what do you do about it? Failing, if you don't pass the shade study, what are you gonna do? That's a very good question. Um, I don't know if if you can fail a shade study. I I know they have you do it to demonstrate what the impact is. Um, if there's an adverse impact, then they then they may ask you to see if there's a way to mitigate it. But um, the city can't actually penalize you for something that you actually have a right to develop. So um, if you're, you know, in this case, um, the city says, you know, you can build a uh, 420 foot tower on this site. We're not even 420 feet, but the city says you can go even taller um, and it can be this big. Um, and then if they say, oh, well, your shade study failed, you can't build a tower anymore, they can't do that. The city won't allow you to do, they, they aren't allowed to actually take away your development right. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I understand, yeah. We'll have to share the studies with you and show you, because we we did do that previously about when we were looking at the garden spaces, so we can actually um, 
Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ken and Sean, for doing the walkthrough again. You know, there's a lot of challenging parts to this that, you know, you kind of feel good about maybe and a lot that you might not feel good about. Uh, we need to listen and see what we can modify to help make it more palatable, whether whatever that might be. And that's what we'll do. There will be many other meetings talking about the design and some of the specificity of some of the details of spaces. For those people who are interested in litigating the past and expressing their frustration and concerns about what we're doing and why we're doing it, I invite you to come and set up an appointment with me in my office and we will talk through and you can share any and all of your frustrations or your concerns or objections or whatever, some of which might find their way into changes in design. But what we won't do is have a meeting to litigate the past. We've, we've decided to go forward. We want to do it thoughtfully, and we want to take into account input, but those are different kinds of meetings. So again, for those interested in wanting to have their voices expressed about what they don't care for or like, make an appointment, come into my office. If we need to have board members there, we'll have board members there. We'll have the audience who can hear what your concerns are, and we'll take them under advisement. And in the future, we'll continue to march through with different uh, design uh, um, elements that have uh, we, you know, screwed down, and whether it's a, you know, light study and understanding how that's going to impact it, so that that process can continue to go forward. Thank you for being here. I hope it's helpful. I hope that the inclusion is a good experience, if not an ideal one. Thanks so much.